Welcome to Discovery Mega 65 with me, Shalab. A series of videos in which I share highlights of my journey to discover more about the inner workings of the Mega 65. In this video, we'll take a look at how to use the Mega 65's raster rewrite buffer, a system that allows compositing of multiple graphic layers with no hit to CPU time. But before we delve into that, let's take a look at why we need to use it. So what's the problem? In most games, to display players or enemies, we need a way to display an image over the background in a way that it can be moved around on its own layer independently. We call this type of image a sprite, and it's a term that is still used today, although in a much broader sense. Many of the computers of the 80s had hardware to handle compositing these images into the view. These sprites came in various sizes, colours and limitations depending on the system. Everything from the TI-994A to the NES to the Amiga had them, and indeed the Commodore 64 was no different, sporting 8 hardware sprites of up to 3 colours at 24 by 21 pixels. With some trickery you can make the system appear to draw many more sprites through a technique called multiplexing, but the 8 sprite limit remained and meant that you could never have more than 8 on a line at any one time, and the multiplexing routine used a fair amount of CPU time. Some systems such as the ZX Spectrum didn't have hardware sprites, and so instead programmers had to composite custom sprite data using software, a system commonly known as soft sprites, and involves merging background and sprites one byte at a time. To overcome the 8 sprite per line limit on the Commodore 64, many games also implemented soft sprites. But this method has its limitations. Firstly, almost all these routines are slow, taking up a lot of CPU time and therefore limiting the number of soft sprites that can be handled. This is because a typical soft sprite system needs to clear and draw the sprites every frame, which involves reading, writing and operating on every byte in the sprite data multiple times. Add a lot of sprites and these operations soon build up to unmanageable levels. Secondly, the programmer is limited to whichever graphics mode is in use, meaning soft sprites have to share many attributes with the screen underneath unlike hardware sprites which tend to be independent. This can cause a few problems such as colour clash, something Spectrum owners will be intimately familiar with. Thirdly, many of the techniques for speeding up soft sprites cause other drops in quality. Boosting sprite drawn and clearing speed by not merging with the background, but just overwriting the background, causes rectangle cutouts everywhere that a soft sprite is drawn. Reducing the complexity of merging with the background data by ensuring that all soft sprites align to the 8x8 character grid can cause movement to be less smooth. Soft sprites tend to be used mostly for bullets in shooter games such as Turrican, or for small things that can be handled quickly such as the particle systems in my upcoming port of Jagonoid. What's the solution? Well, consider the arcade game Raiden, which I'm starting to make for the Mega 65. It's a high-octane shooter with an insane amount of on-screen bullet action. Far too many bullets to handle in hardware sprites without serious glitching, something the PC Engine version shown here suffers with when the action gets busy. And far too many bullets to even consider trying to do it in software sprites. Even though the Mega 65 is fast at 40 MHz, this would still end up being a huge waste of CPU time that could be better used elsewhere. So this is where the Mega 65 has a trick up its sleeve the raster rewrite buffer. This feature of the VIC-4 implementation allows the compositing of multiple character layers with transparency and without the need to do any of that tedious stuff we need to do for traditional software sprites. The way it works is pretty simple. You can think of the VIC-4 rendering a character mode line on the screen as following a list of instructions. Each instruction consists of two pieces of data, one taken from the color RAM and the other taken from screen RAM. So to draw a 40 column screen, you can think of the VIC-4 as doing the following. Starting at the left side of the screen, the VIC-4 processes each column one at a time, taking the color RAM and the screen RAM data and converting that to an image on screen. I'm showing an entire character row of 8 pixels high here, but in reality the VIC-4 processes a single 1 pixel high line across the whole screen width and repeats this 8 times per character row to produce the image. However, it's easier to show what's going on if we show all eight lines at the same time. In this example, once the VIC-4 has reached the end of the screen row data and it has processed 40 columns, it stops rendering and waits to go on to the next row where the process repeats until the end of the screen at row 25. 
However, the Mega 65 allows you to instruct the VIC-4 to process as many characters per row as you want by changing the value in the char count VIC-4 register found at D05E. This changes the amount of data that the VIC-4 will read per row before stopping and waiting to process the next row. For instance, changing this value to 20 means that the VIC-4 will only draw the first 20 characters on each row of the screen. Changing it to a value larger than the number of columns in your screen mode causes the VIC-4 to continue processing data beyond the edge of the screen. Likewise, you can tell the VIC-4 how many bytes of memory a single screen row should take up. This is known as the logical row size and is found in the char step register at D058 and D059. This allows you to have a 40 column screen but have the VIC-4 process 80 characters per row for instance essentially giving you an additional 40 characters off screen per row. And this is where the clever bit comes in. If we switch into 16 bit character mode where every screen RAM location and every color RAM location uses two bytes, we enable what's known as super extended attribute mode. In this mode, as well as being able to set the color and character to be displayed at any given screen location, the VIC-4 has a special instruction called go to X. When this special bit is set in the color RAM for any given column, the VIC-4 does not draw anything for that column, but instead it moves the rendering position to a new horizontal location specified in the screen RAM for that column. This horizontal location is in character pixel space, so it runs from zero on the left all the way up to 320 and beyond on the right. All the following data that the VIC-4 processes for that line on the screen will be drawn starting from this new X position and composited over the existing graphical data. Setting the vertical flip bit at the same time as setting the go to X bit will set color zero to be transparent for the following data. This is used in the case of using palleted colors such as when using full color text mode. Finally, in order to allow the entire line to be drawn, it needs to be terminated correctly. Otherwise, it'll only be drawn as far as the last rewritten line. To do this, a final rewrite is passed to the VIC-4, this time with an X position at the far right of the screen. This effect can be changed multiple times on a row, allowing you to create many layers of independently positioned character data that composites perfectly over previous layers. And the best thing of all, this effect is all processed by the VIC-4 and takes no extra CPU time to perform. In fact, the only time you will need any CPU cycles at all is if you want to change anything in the screen or color RAM, such as the rewrite position or the contents of any layer. And this is much like any other single screen update on the C64. So there you have it, the raster rewrite buffer. Hopefully some of you found the information in this video useful. If you did, let me know in the comments below and hit like and subscribe if you want to see more. I also do this sort of stuff two or three times a week live on Twitch. The link is in the description below if you want to come and join in on the fun.